I want to talk about Iran, Israel, Hezbollah, Hamas, what's happening in the Middle East and what's happening further afield. It doesn't seem like that long ago when we saw those jets smashing into the side of the Twin Towers and, and, and bringing the whole of New York to its knees and really changing the course of, of the first part of the, of the 21st century. And what came from that was a global war on terror. And were the mistakes made in that war? Absolutely. Were de deliberately mista deliberate mistakes made in that war? Very, very possibly. I, th I always thought one of the interesting things about the, the global war on terror is that the, the protagonists, the people that, that launched the attacks on 9-11, I think they were all Saudis. Certainly the vast majority of them were Saudis. I think they all were. And yet, and yet, there was no sanction taken against Saudi Arabia whatsoever. And in fact, the opposite happened. The enemies of Saudi Arabia were the ones that end up getting attacked and, and destroyed, in, in, certainly in the um, case of Iraq and, and, and Saddam Hussein. And, and really what that led to, and this is where we've got to be very, very careful when people are hoping for war and asking for war, what that led to was Obviously, the birth of Al -Qaeda, initially Al Qaeda in Iraq, and then other Sunni groups, other Sunni jihadist groups coming together in Iraq and eventually forming ISIS. So that part of the war was completely flawed. And again, um, obviously, when when Bush made his axis of evil speech, Iran was very much included in that axis of axis of evil, and yet. Iran, since 9-11, has gone completely unscathed. Obviously, Iran probably didn't have any direct input into what happened on 9-11. It was led by Saudi Arabian Al-Qaeda terrorists. Obviously, Bin Laden himself was the, the chief plotter, along with others. And the rest is history. And then, of course, what, what happened before the war in Iraq was was the invasion of Afghanistan. And it wasn't really invasion. It was really a, a cobbling together of paramilitary groups led by the CIA, led by American and British special forces and probably special forces from other countries as well to oust the, the Taliban and put a, a stranglehold on Al-Qaeda. And to a great extent, that was successful. Al-Qaeda have not launched a mass attack on the scale of 9-11 for many, many years. There's There's been lots of jihadist attacks, but not directly Al-Qaeda ones. And of course, Bin Laden, Bin Laden was killed. So looking at the overall scheme of things, Afghanistan was not a massively successful operation in terms of de-radicalizing the population and bringing about a Western style liberal democracy, but anybody that thought that that might happen in a country like Afghanistan, well, really their head was in the sky because why would people that have a completely different ideology and belief system suddenly sign up to the woke liberal Western ideas that have taken hold in the past, in the past 20 years? My goodness, we're Western and liberal and we don't like them. So why would conservative Muslims in Afghanistan want to sign up to the garbage that's been pumped out by most universities in America and the UK for the past 20 or 30 years. So ideologically and strategically, um, there, was a, there was a big fail there in the, in the plan to democratize Afghanistan and turn it into a, a, a woke paradise um, in the Hindu Kush. But what was a success was having a stranglehold on jihadists and stopping jihadists attacking the West and destroying our way of life until ISIS came along. And then obviously 2014, 2015, ISIS came storming onto the stage. And let's get it right. Very nearly, very nearly took over. Well, in fact, they did take over large parts of Iraq and Syria. And the reality is that much of the, the, 
the skullduggery that went on with the certainly the American security service, according to according to General General Mike Flynn, and quite possibly and almost certainly um, elements of the British security services in their clamour to defeat Assad in Syria, basically created ISIS from the Al Nusra Front and other other jihadist organisations. They all came together in one horrible, monstrous blob of hate, terror and and carnage and became Islamic State in the Levant or ISIS or ISIL or whatever whatever name you want to call them. And they perpetrate some of the, the worst war crimes since the Second World War, the genocide of the Yazidis, um, the genocide of Christians in, in Syria and on and on it goes, the, 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 the list goes on. And to a great extent at the beginning, that was manufactured, if you like, by what we'd done in um, in the in the Middle East in the in the previous ten to fifteen years, and the vacuum that was left there. And again, of course, the the Salafists of Qatar and the Wahhabists of Saudi Arabia, many of them backed and funded ISIS because it suited their agenda, their crazy agenda. And and the irony of all this is. The irony of this is that Hezbollah and Syria, enemies of Israel, you know, Hezbollah are um, Shia jihadists. You know, they're, they're doing, they're the army of God. That's what Hezbollah means, the army of God. And they're doing what they're doing in the name of God, in the name of Allah. Obviously, Allah is not the God that Christians worship, but they're doing it in the name of Allah. So what we've got now is a situation where Hezbollah has been dramatically weakened by what Israel's done. And Israel, uh, you know, I'm, I'm one of these people that in no way blames Israel for defending itself. Israel is, is surrounded on all sides. In um, in the Gaza Strip, you had Sunni jihadists that incidentally and interestingly were sponsored by, by Iran. That's got to be a case of my enemy's enemy is my friend. And obviously in the north, they've got Hezbollah, which are a Shia jihadist. So they're, they're surrounded on all sides by, by jihadists. And the reality is that if any of these governments in the Middle East had fallen to jihadist regimes, say, for instance, you know, half of Syria had become um, a Sunni jihadist state and half of it fell under the, under the, the sway of, of Hezbollah, which is pretty much what, what it was looking like was going to happen at one point, then there would have been jihadists basically running large swathes of the Middle East in an even bigger at an even bigger level than they are now. Throw Turkey into the mix with that with Erdogan who is an is an Islamist politician and the mix is completely and utterly toxic. And now because of the the withdrawal because of the American withdrawal from Afghanistan which was an absolute disaster you now have a festering cesspool of terrorism in Afghanistan. They are armed to the teeth because the Americans under Biden just cut and run. Would it have been any different under Trump? I'm not honestly, I'm not honestly sure. I don't know what his plan was for withdrawal. He was certainly going to withdraw. But I think one of the problems is that people do not understand religious fundamentalism and what people will do if they absolutely believe to the letter what is written in their supposedly holy books. And what they will do and what they will unleash on the population of the country that they they control. People just do not understand that. And I'm, when I'm talking about people, I'm talking about senior politicians. They don't get it. And what's happened since those since those horrendous wars? There's been a massive flow of refugees into the West. Many of them will share the values of Al Qaeda, Al Nusra, ISIS. Many of them will be Islamists and they've come to our countries. They've come to our states. And the, the question is, how much of a threat are they now in 2024? Is the threat greater or is it less than it was in when 9-11 happened? And that's a question that every single politician should be asking, but they're not. Instead, in, in the UK, the, the new left-wing communist government is is swooning over the so-called threat from the from the far right when the real threat when we're talking about terrorism when we're talking about insurrection when we're talking about the overthrow of the government is coming quite obviously from the jihadists 
and their fellow travellers, the Islamists, that are already resident and have, take, have set up shop in the UK. So what's the answer to this? Well, we'll do that in another video, but I think we've got to realise that the threat is very, very real. It's probably more severe than it's ever been, even before 9-11, because the groups now have a lot of experience in fighting against the West. Many of their members will be um, British and American trained commandos that fought against the Taliban and to save their lives, almost understandably, have flipped sides because they're, kept, they're, they're worried about the safety of their families and themselves. So we are in a very, very serious situation. And it's a situation that was, was handled. Is it a conspiracy? I don't think it is. I think it's just complete stupidity on behalf of people that are controlling the governments. It's the liberal elite doing what liberal elites do best, thinking that they know better than anybody else, not understanding religion, not understanding ideology, and not understanding what it means to love your religion and love your country enough to die for it. That's the problem that we've got with the liberal elites. And um, what are the solutions? Well, like I say, we'll look at that in another video.